Thank you so much, guys. So great to hear those stories, isn't it? And um, ooh, just mind my little stand. Great, there we go. Good. Well, it's good to see you tonight. And um, thank you for sharing those stories, guys. It's so encouraging to hear people stuck into the life of the church, um, serving the body of Christ. And tonight we're, we're uh, finishing off this little three mini, mini three-part series around generosity. And I'm going to talk to you about serving. We've had it sort of set up and heard the stories and I'm going to unpack uh, a little bit of sort of theology and Bible around serving, what it is that we do when we serve, why do we serve, why is it important for us, why is it good for us, um, and how can we respond. And as Josh has said, uh, at the end of this, um, we're going to have a chance to respond, but also to head down to the crypt for what we can only describe as the St. Nick's Freshers Fair, which is going to be a chance to hear and meet some of the people from the teams and think about us getting involved in the life of the church. And just a sort of reminder of what we've been saying over the last couple of weeks with uh, generosity in terms of our financial giving, which we've looked at the last two weeks, and then today uh, thinking about our serving, about how we use our time and our gifts. We've said over the last few weeks that uh, these two things, generosity uh, in terms of our giving, of our our time and our money, is not something that we want uh, from you. We're not out to sort of like get your name on a list and, and just do that for the sake of admin and for the sake of, you know, tick box, bo- ticking boxes. But we want um, this to be something for you, something for your discipleship, to grow your faith, to get you connected into the life of the church. We want this to be something for you, uh, not something that we want from you. So we're going to dive into a passage now um, from 1 Peter chapter 4. If you've got a Bible, uh, do grab it. If not, it's going to come up on the screen. And this is towards the end of the New Testament. Uh, This is some instruction to some Christians uh, in the first century, one of the earliest churches that Paul planted and was writing to. And it says this, in 1 Peter chapter 4, uh, verse 10 and 11, it says this, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do it as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory, the power, forever and ever. Amen. And all God's people said, Amen. Because that's what you do when the Bible says amen. People seem to sort of repeat the word amen, which is what you did. So very good. Well done. Um, so this little passage here is, um, I, I've sort of, if you want to give my talk a title, I've called my talk tonight, Your Time is a Gift. Your Time is a Gift. And it's a gift in two ways. Your time is a gift to you. You are given time. We are all given time. But it also is also a, a gift to others. Your time is a gift to others. But I wonder if I asked you, like sort of one-to-one, uh, do you have much spare time? You're probably thinking, no, I've probably not got a whole lot of spare time. I'm busy. I'm sure many of you would say, I'm so busy. I've got so much to do. I've got all this, uh, I've got a to-do list in my work. I've got a to-do list with my family. I've got a to-do list uh, with my house or my garden, whatever it may be you're probably thinking, I've got no time whatsoever. And I think that we live in a busy uh, area of our, uh, or sort of season of our our lives, a busy time in human history. And I think we can often feel torn, can't we, between different areas and different commitments. I've got to do this. Now I've got to do this. I must do this. I should be doing this. And if you're honest, uh, when you think about your time in church, you might be thinking, you know what, I've got no spare time left. I've, I've run out of time And you might think the idea of uh, using some of your spare time to serve the church might uh, bring up even more anxiety and fear within you. So I haven't got enough time to do everything. You might have also had um, a bad experience of serving at other churches in the past. You might be burnt out uh, because of serving or being uh, expected too much of your time, having too much pressure put on you. And when when we first started St. Nick six years ago, Uh, We sat down as a team, and we wanted to be a church that uh, sought to build community uh, where we wanted people to serve, but we didn't want to put too much expectation and pressure on people. We wanted serving in church to be like a life-giving joy and a freedom in serving uh, the life of the church, not a sort of duty or an expectation. 
I once heard, um, in terms of life priorities, uh, things being ordered like this. And you may have heard this. You might have seen an illustration with like rocks and pebbles and sand and stuff. And uh, I heard it said that you are to sort of order your priorities like this in terms of time and serving should be in this order. God first, because he is the most important thing. Serving God first. And then your family, your family and those close to you. If you're married, your partner. If you've got kids, your kids. If not, your close friends. Those closest to you, second. Thirdly, then your work, what you do uh, in your life to earn money. And then thirdly, your ministry, your church involvement. And I think that's really helpful just to remember. God first, family, close friends second, your work third, and then ministry and church fourth. So tonight, instead of um, a talk about serving, bringing up sort of more stress and more to-do uh, lists and anxiety in you, I'd love this moment, this evening tonight, just to have a moment where you can just pause and stop and breathe and just like just reset and say God what are you calling me to how can you help me just reorder my priorities so I can get things in the right way around I'd love this moment tonight to encourage you and to maybe equip you and just to maybe sort of gently prod and prompt you about your time and your gifts how you can serve God in this season so why do we serve just two points tonight why do we serve? Firstly, we serve because we are all called to serve. We're all called to serve. Have a look again at the passage. It says, each of you should use your gift to serve others. Do you feel called to serve? Do you feel called to serve? One of the foundational sort of core truths of the Christian faith is that we are called to serve. You are called to serve. Jesus himself sets that example. In Mark chapter 10, Jesus says this, for even the Son of Man, that's himself, did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So if Jesus, the King of Kings, came to serve, how much more are we called to do the same in response? Jesus washed his disciples' feet they said, no, no, you can't wash our feet. We've got to wash your feet. He was showing service, sacrificial, humble service and love, showing that no act of service was too small or insignificant. Jesus modeled uh, serving to show it's important, but he also modeled it to show us that it's what he wants us to do. The disciples at that moment where he was washing their feet said, no, 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 you, you, you can't wash our feet. He was saying, no, I must because he was wanting them to model it to them so that they would do it to others. The gifts that we have are to be used to serve God in all the areas of our lives, in our marriages, in our families, in our close friendships, outside of church and inside of church, with our work and our careers and our ministry in the church as well. And for most of us, many of us in fact, our primary context of using our gifts is in our workplace. What you do Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, or on shifts if you're a shift worker. If you're in work, whatever your job is at the moment, God has put you there with those skills and those gifts and those talents, those passions, to serve him, to glorify him and to bring his kingdom into your workplace. I don't know if you've ever thought about that. Have you ever thought about God in your workplace? Or if you're studying at the moment and you're sort of on the journey to pursuing your career, or if you're changing career at the moment, God has put those skills and that desire to study and that desire to train. He's put those passions in you to serve him in the future. If you, if you have a sense of that and you know God's called you to your workplace and you know you're serving him there, that's great. Hold on to that. I really encourage you to hang on to it, especially in hard times. If God's called you there, hang on to that because he will be faithful to your calling. But if you don't know that sense of calling in your workplace, why don't you ask him? Ask him in prayer. God, why am I here? <laughs> Maybe not at your desk. You can sort of, well, you could if you want, but sort of silently on a lunch break or something. God, why am I here? Why have you put me here? What are you calling me to in this place? at this time? How are you calling me to serve my work colleagues, this business that I 
work for, whatever it may be. How can you use my career, God, to glorify you? Praying those words that we've uh, journeyed through as well, through, the, through this term, your kingdom come, your will be done. If you're at school or studying or something, just praying those words, your kingdom come. God, what do you want to use me and my roles and my skills for in this time, in this place? I remember being in job interviews over the years and just thinking, thinking I feel called to this, but it's got to be God. And just praying those words, God, your kingdom come, your will be done. Not, not my will, not what I want, but God, what you want in me and for me. Praying those words each and every day, the Lord's Prayer, or just your kingdom come, God, your will be done. is so powerful. We are each called to serve God with our whole lives both out of church, in the world, and in church. Not out of like duty or a command, but out of a joyful response. I love that the Bible is always uh, referring to God as like the initiator. You think of um, the story of the prodigal son, where the, the father runs to the son who is a long way off. God is always the initiator, the one who models to us what he wants for us. We love because God first loved us. God is love. That's 1 John 4. We love and we can only love because he loved us first. We give generously because he is the one who generously gave his son for us in the person of Jesus. And we serve him because he is, and he describes himself as the servant king, the one who came to serve us. So why do we serve? Firstly, because we are called to do so. Secondly, then, why do we serve? We serve because every single gift matters. Every single person matters. Just going back to the passage, it says, um, if anyone speaks, they should do so as the one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength that God provides, so that in all things God may be praised. So we've looked at the context of the workplace and your career or your training or your study. Let's think now about um, the life of the church. Sometimes I think we can hesitate to say, oh, I'd like to have a go at that. Or I think I could serve on this rotor. Or I think I could give kids or youth a go or worship or whatever. Because we look at other people and think, oh, I'm not quite as good as they are. And they've got more skills than I have. And you know, I'm probably not as good as leading a, a group or giving a talk or playing the drums or whatever. And, and we discount ourselves because we think, oh, maybe I'm not as good. Maybe I haven't got something to give. Maybe that's you. Maybe you felt like that in, in the past and thought, oh, there must be someone else. They could, they'll, they'll do better with someone else. Paul in 1 Corinthians says that every member, every person is like a part of the body. And every part needs the other parts. No one is more important than another. No one is more uh, qualified than another. We are together the body of Christ. And here at St. Nick's, no matter uh, what your gifts, whether you've uh, had years of experience in church or you've just been here for a few weeks, we long to get you plugged in and see you thrive in the life of the church. The church thrives when every member, every person uses their gifts and plays their part. Don't let discouragement, the lie of sort of discouragement or, uh, or doubt, discount you. You have a part to play. Don't compare your gifts with someone else and say, oh, I'm not as good as Dave on the drums, or I'm not as good a singer as that person, or I could never do that, or no, don't. You have a part to play, a role to play, and God has given you the unique uh, combination of your character and your experience and your passions and your abilities. No one else can bring what you can bring. Again, if you look uh, through the story of the Bible, it's full of people who doubted their abilities, who thought, no, there's someone else, there's someone else better. You look at Moses in the Old Testament who thought he was called to lead his people, the Israelites, out of Egypt, out of slavery, into the promised land. He said, no, I can't do it. I can't, I can't speak. I'm not very good at speaking uh, I, I, I'm not going to get it right if I go to Pharaoh. God said, no, you can. I will, I've called you and I will equip you. You look at David, who was just a shepherd boy uh, out in the fields. He wasn't one of the strong warriors. And yet he was the one that was then called to be king. 
the one that was sort of thought, oh, yeah, there's, there's another guy in the field, you know, you could try him and ask him to be king. The one that wasn't expected to be uh, the king was. And then the disciples, Jesus uh, chose this bunch of guys who weren't sort of scholars in the, in the, in the Jewish scriptures. These were guys who probably failed uh, Torah school, if that was a thing, or the synagogue, that was a thing. Uh, they sort of failed at that moment, and they'd gone back to what they, would, uh, what they were doing. They'd gone back to fishing. They thought we could never make it as, as teachers of the law. We could never make it as rabbis. And yet, Jesus chose and called them to follow him, and he used them to change the world. God doesn't ask for our perfection. He asks for us to have a willing heart. He asks us to have a willing heart. If you make yourself available to serve God, both in your workplace and in the church, God will use your willingness and take care of the rest. Speaking uh, sort of specifically around uh, the life of St. Nick's at the moment, we have, if, and, and I think um, Ruth alluded to it this morning, uh, sorry, just now, about this morning, the, the morning service at St. Nick's is like, I can only describe it as like a slightly sort of, um, I don't know, how would you describe it? It's, it's busy with lots of kids, basically. We're, we're seeing like, a, I think it's a sort of, um, we're in this sort of like tidal wave of, of post-COVID um, birth. <laughs> <laughs> And we've got lots of under fives, which is great, which is absolutely amazing. We are like, <laughs> sorry, we are like, we are growing with young people. It's amazing. Each week, new families are coming. Um, and we have around 80 kids every single Sunday morning. Uh, we've got about 25 youth as well. And um, we formed a new thing with the St. Nick's team with um, Eloise, who's a kids pastor, Annie, who's a student, uh, kid, youth pastor, sorry, and uh, Jake, who's our student pastor. We've formed a new team called the Rising Generation Team. And we've nicknamed it RG. RG Bargy, actually we've nicknamed it, um, RG Rising Generation. And the purpose of us doing this is because we want to, as a church, view the journey of uh, a zero, a naught to a 21-year-old in our church as like a whole process of being welcomed into the church, of being invested in in faith, of being mentored and of being encouraged and being taught about Jesus and being released into gifts and then being sent out at the end of your student years. So if you're sort of one month old or 21, uh, you're part of the Rising Generation um, RG <laughs> community. And, um, and so Eloise and Annie and Jake had this up. And we, at the moment, are sort of thinking about how we can invest in those who are younger than us. How the students, maybe, can invest in the youth and how the youth can serve on kids' teams. We've seen done some of that already. We've um, been training up some of the young people to lead worship. We've been uh, trying to get some of the uh, 11-year-olds who are for sort of getting a little bit too cool for kids' church to come and serve some of the three- and four-year-olds, which has been really, really fun, just trying to like invest in the, uh, the younger years, the ones younger than them. And um, we were thinking this week in our staff team about this idea of legacy, and legacy, we were trying to sort of define it and think about it in our, in our staff team. And um, lots of people who are older are thinking about, what am I leaving behind when I, when I go, when I sort of, when I leave this earth, what is my legacy? And I think lots of uh, people who are over the age of 21, if you're over the age of 21 here, are starting to think about, what is, what's the purpose of my life? What is my legacy? And lots of people who are um, younger are thinking, what is my purpose in life? What is my destiny? They're looking ahead into their life. So in this um, Rising Generation team, we were thinking about what would it look like for us to be a church where the older people over the age of 21 or 25 are thinking, I'd love to invest in the young generation, the rising generation, so that those who are um, 0 to 25 are being sort of helped along the way to find their destiny and their purpose following Jesus. We want that to be a sort of uh, a real priority for us in St. Nick's in the next year. So if you would love to invest in the rising generation downstairs in a moment when you've got chips and coke in your hand, you can, you can sign up for those teams. Um, I'd love to especially point you to the youth table where there's a little board of all of the staff team. This is Annie's idea in a fresh as fair game sort of way. We were all asked for a photo of ourselves as teenagers as staff. So you, there's the whole of the St. Nick's team as teenagers um, on the board. You can have a look at us as what we look like as teenagers, which Annie found hilarious. And you can play a little game to win some sort of prize. 
in <laughs> downstairs in a minute. So that is, um, yeah, make your legacy helping the rising generation find their destiny, their purpose in Jesus. Wouldn't that be amazing? Wouldn't that be amazing to do? Um, invest in the younger generation. If you're older than a student, invest in students. If your students, invest in youth. If you're youth, uh, join some of the kids' teams. Is what they've been doing as well. Finally, before we eat chips and have some Coke and respond, um, I'd love to just tell you a little story about um, a moment I had this week. Uh, I, as along with Toby, actually, we got invited as um, the vicars of this church to go to what can only be described as like a vicar's conference away in Derbyshire. And it was basically all the vicars of Bristol Diocese, which is all the vicars around here, uh, go away for some investment and input. And um, I was, wasn't looking forward to it, if I'm honest. Two days with a whole load of, load of vicars, not really my uh, way of having loads of fun. But um, I was stood there in the worship, and um, it, there was one moment where a song came on, and it was a song that was being played by... Uh, written by a guy called Graham Kendrick. Now, Graham Kendrick, best known for Shine, Jesus, Shine, the banger that you might have sung at assemblies or at some point in your life. I'm not going to sing that song, but he also, um, he also wrote a song called um, Servant King, The Servant King. And we sang this song as a whole bunch of vicars, all these um, men and women who've been called to serve the church, to lead the church. And it was actually, it really struck me, even though it's a sort of like a slightly old 80s corny song, I was sort of standing there surrounded by people who are called to serve the church singing these words. And I'm going to just read them to you as like a little prayer um, before we finish tonight. Um, this is the words from a song called The Servant King. It says this, So let us learn how to serve and in our lives enthrone him, each other's needs to prefer, for it is Christ we're serving. And then the chorus is this, this is our God, the servant king. He calls us now to follow him, to bring our lives as a daily offering of service to the servant king. And it was a moment where I think the spirit of God just like fell on me again just, and just reminded me of what we do when we serve our servant king. There I was sort of stood with all these other church leaders, um, sort of offering our lives back to God um, in, in sort of service of him. And it's only when we sort of capture that sense of God is the one who initiated uh, serving us as the humble serving king that we think, God, you are so worthy of my time and my gifts and my money and all that I have. I long to serve you, Jesus, so that you may be glorified. Not St. Nick's, not us, but that Jesus may be glorified in us and through us. So I would love to both encourage you tonight and challenge you your time is a gift for others. Live to serve God, your servant king, our servant king, so that he would be glorified. Amen. Amen. Why don't we pray together? Let's just be quiet and just invite God just to speak to us. And then uh, Josh and Tim are going to come and lead us practically. Jesus, thank you for your love for each and every one of us. God, thank you that you are here right now. And Jesus, thank you that you have placed in each of us unique skills and gifts and talents. Passions to serve you. God, I pray right now that you would, just by your spirit, help us to just reprioritize what we, what we do with our lives, what we think about, how we spend our time, how we spend our money. And God, I pray right now that your spirit would come and bring just a life-giving joy. Your spirit would come and maybe heal some past wounds where we've felt burnt out by church or felt pressure to do something. God, we ask now that you'd speak to us. Speak to us in these 
the next few moments as we just consider what we can bring, how we can serve you. Just invite God now just to just say, God, what is it that you're saying to me right now? What is it you're prompting me about? Maybe for some of you, you've had a, a sense of calling to the church and you've ignored that for a while. Maybe you've been put off by a bad experience where you've offered your gifts and they've been rejected or criticized. And maybe we, we felt before the service this was a moment just to receive some healing and just, just ask God, Lord, would you heal, heal that wound in my life where I've felt burnt out or, or rejected? And maybe this is a reset moment. This is a, a moment just to say, God, you know I love you. You know I want to be involved in, the, in what you're doing, your kingdom in this city, in this church. I want to serve you with my career, with my, with my course, with my, yeah, the, the time I spend volunteering for charities, whatever it is. This is maybe a reset moment. Yeah, Father, we give you this moment. We invite you to continue to move amongst us this evening. In Jesus' name. Amen.